Alright, good morning everyone, or hello everyone, welcome to Queer Games, heck yeah, whether you're watching this on Twitch or as a VOD on YouTube, do we still use the word VOD? What is that? It's like video on demand. Wow, that is, that's an ancient phrase, isn't it? Um, this is Queer Games, heck yeah, where we play a bunch of modern, contemporary, little indie queer games. I'm not really selling it, am I? Um, this is where we delve into the intense beating heart of um, the vanguard of the future of gaming. That sounds better. I'm Luke Miller, I'm a game developer, I make gay games, uh, which is a subgenre of queer games. I'm helping out with the Queer Games Festival, and part of that is taking screenshots of all the games that are in this year's festival. Uh, I thought since I've got a, I'm playing through the games, since I have to play through the games, I thought I'd stream it. Um, create a little bit of space for for these wonderful little games that don't get enough coverage. So uh, that's why we're here. Um, I've done the introductions. Content warning. I don't know what we're going to see. So if that's you know in the mood for that, look away. Um, but we should get into it. Uh, this is what I think the. 15th or 16th game we've looked at, it's, so I I'm, I'm should be good at streaming by now. Um, we almost had a countdown to the start of the stream today, so I was very excited about that. Um, but it wasn't to be, it wasn't to be. Uh, one of the quirks of my computer is that um, I have to reset some driver for the webcam uh, before I can use it, and OBS, which is the software I use to stream this thing. So unfortunately I had to exit OBS, just at the last second. Um, but yeah, let's give it a go. This is today's game. Oh, I haven't updated the overlay. Oh, you know, I try to come out of the, I try to come out of the gate, like burst out of the gate, like some sort of horse at a racetrack um, of professionalism. But alas, <laughs> the wheels have come off. They've had to put up the curtains and bring out the blunderbuss and put me out of my misery because I have forgotten to update the overlay with the game name. We're looking at Quantum Bummer Blues, which is an awesome title. Um, doesn't give away what the game is about, but, well, something quantum level, I guess. But, um, you know, what a brilliant name. I always think, as an indie dev, your main marketing pitch is your game title. Because getting people to watch a trailer, get, making a trailer is tough, making a professional trailer is extra tough, um, et cetera, et cetera. Getting people to look at your web page, very difficult. Getting people to download the game, almost impossible. Um, but getting people to see the name of the game is very low, um, what do you call it? Low effort on, on players' parts, like they can, just as they're scrolling, they'll see a game name. And so make it something catchy and memorable that gets the punters in to keep the horse racing metaphor going. Even though, like, you know, we're not really pro horse racing in this household, but the metaphors are actually sensationally good. So maybe we'll run with them today. Maybe it's a horse-themed stream. Quantum Bummer Blues. I know nothing about it, which is the way I like it. Um, it's un it's full screen. I do I know that about it, which is slightly annoying. Um, but it's okay. And I think from what I, I couldn't get the keyboard to work, but I think because the controller was already plugged in, it picked up that the controller is is going. So um, I'm kind of excited that we may have our first controller game on Queer Games Heck Yeah. Um, is it worth putting joypad... See, I have this massive extension cord. I have an extension cord for my control pad, so I can use it pretty much anywhere in the house, because I was too cheap to get a wireless one. But of course that means now I'm like... <laughs> just another wire just draped around the house. Is it worth putting gamepad support in your game? I mean, it depends. I don't think it'll make you any money as a game dev, but just for like a complete little polish, little act of polish for your game, I think it's worth it. 
Because I think part of the problem with indie games, or one of the struggle for indie games, is about keeping the game super accessible. You know, I've been going through this a bit lately with one of my own games. Um, just because the scene changes so much so quickly. You know, it used to be you just put it up on a website and people would buy it and download it. But now you've got to have it on Steam, you've got to have it on Itch, you've got to have it on the Switch. I mean, you don't have to do any of these things, but it's like, it's very fragmented, you know. And I think one of the, I mean, we talk about it as like fragmentation of the customer base, but also I think it's an accessibility issue in a way. Like, how do you keep, like a book is a book. I mean, it doesn't matter if the book's in a library or on a shelf or on a bus or a train um, or in a different country, you can just pick it up and read it. But with a game, you've got to, like, there's keyboards, there's mouse, there's joypads, there's VR controllers, there's touchscreens, there's tablets, there's phones. So, yeah, control pad, kind of useful. Kind of useful. Okay, how to play. I mean, should I be reading it? Should I just be going straight into it? In this game, you play as the blood pouring out of a dead girl's body. Okay, interesting pitch. Um, not against it. Your goal is to escape prison before you run out of blood. Encircle the green atoms with your blood to make them collide, then grab them to earn points. Larger atoms are worth more points. While in an open area, blue turrets will periodically spawn in. The more blood you have, the faster they spawn. Getting hit by their bullets removes one of your lives, but refills blood. This is very complicated for me. Um, I'm kind of hoping the game will explain itself as we play it. Uh, I mean, I think that's... Isn't that the ideal game, is that you can just pick it up and play, you don't actually need to read the, the instructions. You also gain an extra life every 10,000 points, and extra blood every 5,000 points. So that's a lot, I don't know, a third page. It's all like real life. Um, I'm holding the controller pad up, just because I'm so excited to be able to use one in a game. Um, hold the down arrow, or the A button on a gamepad, that's us, right, and any diagonal direction to ready a bloodshot, then let go of the down arrow to fire. Hold the down arrow, oh, so, yep, that's us, okay. You can't fire another shot until you grab the current bullet. Hitting an atom with your shot increases their speed, as well as the damage done to your blood trail. You gain 50 points for every piece of your trail that's destroyed, so carefully shooting atoms can quickly boost your score. Oh, wait, I've forgotten if we're supposed to be hitting the atoms or, like, avoiding them. Oof, this is another, this is a lot of explaining. explaining. The amount of blood drained from each step is, it's a great font, though. Like, look at that S on the word step. That is six pixels, and you can still tell it's an S. That is spectacular. Um, is represented by the number. Imagine if this was writing, like, we hadn't kind of developed other typefaces. And um, it was just kind of this sort of low pixel writing. It's almost like cuneiform. Every atom you collect causes this value to increase. Oh no! I spent so long thinking about cuneiform, I've completely forgot all the rules of this game. Moving to a space already filled with blood has no effect on your blood supply. Okay. Oh no! More! Lastly, I guess it's better to have too much explanation than not enough. No, I think there's, there's, you've got to find a common ground. Lastly, you can enter... This is so much homework. Lastly, you can enter colouring book mode at any point by pressing the escape key. This mode removes all obstacles from the game so that you can play it at your own pace. I'm liking what I'm hearing. But be warned, using it resets your score back to zero. Okay. Uh, we probably should have just played it. And and suffered the consequences of that. Zero, zero, nine, six. What do you mean he had bullet ho holes Two, in his mirror? Five, he one. tried to do his best, but he could not. Two, one, one, zero. Uh oh, this Eight, is another seven, score. Our score's going up. Five. Oh, oh, so all oh, right. So zero, where? Ah. Oh. Okay. Oh, we're the blood, and we're dripping. Oh, we're dripping out. Okay. Uh, can we go across this gap? I don't know. One, one, zero. Yes. I don't see any atoms yet, though. Eight, oh, no. Zero, uh, can we go back? Yes. Come on, come on. We want to go up. Zero, okay. Yep. Zero, nine, I love the sound effect. Okay, here are the atoms. The killers already made ghosts of themselves. 
Okay, we haven't lost any lives yet, so that's good news. Okay, come on, we want to go up, we want to go up. Can we go up? I don't know if we can go up. Oh, can we only go up? We can go up there, but then we fall back down. Hmm. Can we go up here? Two, one, one, zero. Eight, one, zero, five. Another Thursday night is falling apart. A young girl lies bleeding out in the area, in the arms of a steel cage. I mean, I shouldn't... I mean, I kind of made fun of the whole pr the premise, but <laughs> it's very serious stuff. We have a bit of an issue of people dying in prisons here. Um, yes. Yeah, it's hard to talk. It's hard to talk about like serious issues and also try and get my little blob to go up a wall. Zero, zero, nine, six. Zero, zero, nine, six. Two, two, five, one. Two, two. This voiceover is sensational. I love it. Okay, so it's easy to go across where the blood is. If we can't go up here. I really want to go up there. Oh, do we have to like fill something up maybe? So that's there. There we go. Hmm, maybe there's some element of like... Alright. Oh no. So I thought we get more... Don't we get more blood when the atoms... Oh no. Oh, we don't want to be hit by the atom. Okay. Oh, but it kind of cages them in. Okay. Oh no, oops, that was bad. Ooh, ooh, we're falling down. Uh, oh, I can't say... I can't say I know exactly what we're doing. Zero, zero, nine, six. Oops, don't... There's sort of this gravity effect on the... on the blood bubble. Oh. Okay. A score of 5,000. Out of life's game of a Okay. Well, I can't say I understood what I was doing there. Hmm. <laughs> I guess we should read the instructions again. Quantum Bummer Blues. Okay. Now, why is she... I guess we should... we could keep going to the next level. Because it looked like the story unfolds. So we'll play it again. Call this to escape prison before you run out of blood. Encircle the green atoms with your blood to make them collide. Then grab them to earn points. Oh, so maybe when they collide, they'll change. They they become like vulnerable. While in an open area, blue tyrants will periodically spawn in. The more blood you have, the faster they spawn. Getting hit by their bullets removes one of your lives, but refills your blood. You also gain an extra life every ten thousand points, and extra blood every five thousand points. Hold down. How all the A button on the gamepad and any directional key to ready a bloodshot. Then let go of the down arrow to fire. You can't fire another shot until you grab the current bullet. Hitting an atom with your shot increases the speed as well as the damage done to your blood trail. You gain 50 points for every piece of your trail that's destroyed. So carefully shooting atoms can quickly boost your score. The amount of blood we've drained of each step is rendered by the Number on the IV bag. Every atom you collect causes its value to increase by 7%. Take one damage. Will okay, well, we'll give it another go. Zero, zero, nine, six. Zero, zero, nine, six. I don't, I don't know if you can hear that there there is a voiceover saying numbers in a really cool way. Um, so if you if you can't hear that, and I've just been repeating these numbers, I'm like, this is an odd what an odd stream. But no, there's a reason. Two, one, one, zero. Some people just have cool voices. I think Helen Garner. I was thinking this morning, Helen Garner has the best voice. Um, Oh, 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 okay. So now we've encompassed... Oh, we've encompassed you... No. Almost. 
Okay, we're gonna go for this one. Okay, we've spawned a blue tower. Now we can capture you! Okay, right. Um, okay, we'll capture you. Oops, come on, come on, come on. Can we get out of this hole? Okay. How do we get out of this hole now? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay. And let's. Oh, oh. I see, this blue thing is. <sighs> okay. And then I think we're gonna go. Now let's get out of here. Can we? Uh, and now her blood branches outwards through the bricks beneath the quantum space prison for troubled children. The quantum space prison for troubled children. That sounds awesome. The pages of her diary are sprawled across the floor, worn down by snot and time. More games need snot. I'm a big fan of, um, you know, something I'm always trying to inject more into the stuff that I write is, I guess, really visceral things. And does it get much more visceral than like human body fluids? Like um, games can be, I think, very um, clean. You know, just it's the art form and the the nature of being created on a computer is it's just not very um, they're not very dirty or or disgusting. You know, so the whole idea that you like snot in a game or something, I think, is hilarious and interesting too. Very visceral. It's like um, you know. You never see a toilet on TV. Okay. Um, fluorescent overhead irradiating empty walls. I've been surrounded by for 45 years. Ouch. Back home, it's only been six months. It's easy to see the stuff in movies, thinking this could never be me, until the meatheads restrain you in the early morning. Okay, um, we're just going to play this really clean and fast. We're going to go straight up the middle. Oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Um, can you... Uh, what's, what are we... I've been locked up for 45 years. Back home, it's only the gravity of this... on this star. Is time made manual, uh, mal mal malleable? Each hour squashed down in an arc. See, I can't, I can't talk and read. I can barely talk and read when we're doing a visual novel. The idea that I can talk and play like an action game at the same time is extremely unlikely. So it's going to be a bit of a quiet stream, I'm afraid. Let's take a fabulous screenshot of this fabulousness. Dum, dum, dum. Zero, 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 nine, six. Yes, yeah, so people who have great voices. The person doing this voiceover has a great voice. Helen Garner is an Australian author. Um, I guess she's semi-retired now, but she's got this sort of lovely, uh, lo lovely sort of Melbourne voice? I don't know how you put it. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking about um, a book she wrote in the 80s. In 1978, a bit before my time, um, called Monkey Grip. I think it might be my favourite Australian book. Maybe my favourite book of all time. Well, one of my favourite books of all time, but definitely my favourite Australian book of all time. And it's just her kind of walking, well, her avatar character, just sort of walking around um, her local suburbs and just like over a couple of months or whatever. And just... You know, she'll go to a friend's house and they'll have, you know, a bottle of wine or she'll be trying to, she's, you know, her boyfriend's just kind of away for a while and he's kind of lame. <laughs> he's doing too many drugs. It's just got this really lovely lilt to it. Um, oh, okay. This year I'm 16 years old and next year I'm 16 years old and the year after that I'm 16 years old. Stunted. Which she's been there for 45 years though. Um, I don't quite know how the time dilation works, effect works. And is time dilation the same as quantum? I don't know. Okay, this is getting complicated, this Christmas tree level. No, oh no, we don't want to go back. Okay, I feel. Um, are we running out of blood? Oh, we're almost out of blood again. Okay, I see what's happening. So, the IV bag is draining. As the instructions did warn us, it was all there, it was all written down. 
Um, I guess I just didn't conceptualize it. Maybe the tutorial needed to have pictures, or the first level needed to be the tutorial level. Um, so we're going to need some blood. Let's try and grab these babies. Oh, come on. Oh. Well, I think we did alright. Um, maybe I'll try it without the controller. Maybe I'll try it with the keyboard, because it might be easier to play. No, the keyboard doesn't work. Um, I can only play it with the controller. The mouse doesn't work either. No. Right. Well, I think... Unfortunately with Queer Games Heck Yeah, we're not here to get good at the games. We're here to kind of just give them a good whack, take a few screenshots, and then get out. Uh, so I think we've done that with this game. Um, we certainly didn't give it a fair shake, though. A fair shake of the sauce bottle. Um, because there was definitely a real story there. Uh, yeah, I just don't think we've done this one real justice. Uh, which is a pity. Look, I'll have to think about it and come back to this one, maybe. Because, actually, let's just look at the first screen. Okay, let's take a screenshot of that. Because it's quite a beautiful game. Like, it's low res, which is obviously one of the greatest inventions in computer modern computer game aesthetics. But you can still tell what's happening. Like, look at the, look at the cage that the, the body's in. A, you can tell it's a body. B, you can tell it's a cage. It does look like an IV bag, but also I love sort of the rough hewn-ness of the cage. Like, it's not just, if it, if I had to do it with my programmer art, it would just actually literally be four straight lines. But they've actually give, roughed it up a little bit. Um, and sort of, they've done a good job at it. There's even a curve on the, the right wing. Ah, the aesthetic's really nice. It's literally three colors, black, red, and white. Oh, blue, I guess, with a little, and green for the atoms. But on this screen, that's just the two, or well, the three colors. Sound is simple, but effective. Yeah. I really want to know more about this person. Yeah. Oh, oh, escape. Oh, escape. That's right, we can play at our own pace. Okay, let's try that. Fabulous. Okay, I'm not saying it's got an easy mode. <laughs> but it's, it's a pity the keyboard doesn't work. I think maybe because I've got the controller plugged in. The thing is, I don't want to unplug the controller in case everything stops working. Um, okay, we're, we're going, we're doing. We're going, we're going, we're going. Come on. Oh, whoops, nope, okay. I think you need to, like, not patience with this game, but you can't fight the, you can't fight gravity sometimes. Maybe there's like easier easier paths to go down. Oh, oh no. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. Um, more games where you can just turn off all the monsters. Except for the ones in our hearts. Ah, oh, look at that. Okay. I've got a feeling that this playthrough is going to go a little bit smoother than the first two. Oh, oh. <laughs> <sighs> um, we're like f <laughs> we're like far lap on the home straight. Okay. Eight one zero five zero zero nine six. And now her blood branches outwards through the bricks beneath the quantum space prison for troubled children, troubled children and forty-five year olds. Fluorescent overhead irradiating empty walls. I've been surrounded by for 45 years. Back home, it's only been six months. Ouchie. It's easy to see the stuff in movies, thinking, this could never happen to me. Oh, this could never be me. I don't know how many quantum prisons I see in films. This does seem like the kind of sci-fi prison, though, where they put, like, a 
metal collar around your neck, and if you cross the threshold, it blows it blows up your head. All right, we're flying through it now. I can honestly say I've never played as blood in a game before. I've never read a book where I'm blood. <laughs> I've never seen a film or a movie where I am the blood, or the main character is the blood. So I just have to say, you know, ruminate on that. How amazing is that? Goon you away to some galaxy you've never heard of. Parents apologizing through sopping faces, saying it'll just be for a little while. I've been locked up for 45 years. Back home, it's only been six months. The gravity on this star is time made malleable. Each hour squashed down an infinite dark. Zero, zero, nine, six. Two, two, five, one. Two, one, one, zero. Come on. Eight, Come on. One, We're doing zero, it. Come on. Five, Almost. Yep. Up we go. Zero, zero, nine, oh, just maneuvering around the blood is like two, tough two, enough for me. Five, oh. <laughs> uh, I love this little sort of Christmas tree pipe that we're in. Oh, no. Uh. <laughs> Come on, blood. Up we go. No. Almost. Okay. Um, the pressure has... Oh, I didn't have time to read that. Okay. I'm with you now. The text update's halfway through the scene. So we can't wait until the end of the scene to read the scene text. Okay. The pressure has bent my soul out of shape. Rivers of my life vomit forth rusted. As does our blood. Back home, they're watching movies, thinking this will be good for me. I mean, it's only been six months for people for peeps back home, uh, back home, and 45 years for thee. That is tough. I mean, I've worked some jobs though where I think it was only six months in real time, but it felt like 45 years. <laughs> um, the fun houses are starting to fill up fast. I said the fun houses are starting to fill up fast. The land is getting crowded, so order yours while supplies last. I mean, they could put in an ad for like some for the Royal Melbourne Cup here, and I would have just read that out just then without thinking about it. And oh, we're gonna go there. Oh, no, we can go there this way. We just gotta. Okay, okay, up we go. Come on. Hmm. I don't know why it sometimes goes up and sometimes doesn't. You go up. I mean, maybe there's a maze element to it. We'll go back this way. We don't want to fall, no. Come on. Alright. I like how there's already blood in the pipes. It implies that we are not the first person to try and make... Well, we're not the first blood to try and escape this way. I mean, just conceptually, what a fantastic, brilliant idea. Like... A character's dying in the prison cell, and their blood is dripping down through the ground of this prison complex, and it's a maze of pipes. And just as the blood, we're just kind of seeping past... We're seeping past other prisoners and other rooms, and we're overhearing snippets of conversation... <laughs> conversation, excuse me. All the while, while our dying thoughts are kind of being bled out on the floor. I mean, yeah, brilliant. It's it's done. It's done my head in. Turn my world upside down. Soured scores of kids, mostly junkies, uh, adrenaline hound thieves, the quiet psychotic types, and the poor bastards who never hurt anyone but had parents rich enough to ship them off at the first sign of trouble. Yes. Oh, I, I love this set. I love this, um... Oh, it's a, is it a clock? I want to say it's a clock. Um, or reminiscent of a clock, made out of blood. Oh, oh. Which, when you think about it, would be enough of a concept to sustain a whole game. But here it is, it's just one throwaway little level. 
that's how you know someone is super creative, is when, <laughs> you know, a game that would be remembered for that one thing, they've made a game that's just peppered with them. You know, six or seven things. A gaggle of scruffy missteps, dead set testing, how far they can fall, talking shit and act, talking heck and acting hard. The kids are good people, real sweethearts, full of heck. Sorry, love. That's a swear word in this house. I also love the like public domain archive.org TV movie soundtrack. Um, it kind of conjures up that kind of um, dissoci dissociative state, sort of like a mental asylum sort of thing. This is gorgeous. I'm taking a screenshot of this. Um, I don't think this game is halal, now that I think about it. Each morning we gather round to eat. I fill my mug with slob as a formality. You're insane if you think I'm putting that heck in my body. I've lost 60 libs. 60 pounds since I've been here. I think that's about 20 kilos? 25 kilos? We need a metric conversion if you're the developer watching this. Hack into your beautiful piece of art and add some metric. <laughs> since I've been too, since I've been here, too emaciated to defecate anymore. Damn. Are you getting ready for Mardi Gras as well? Oh, oh no. I mean, the thing is this, it's so low res, but it's so obviously a pig, and it's not just a pig, it's actually a really well drawn pig. Like it's actually a three dimensional pig outline. Um, it's not a harsh outline, it's kind of like, um, I don't know you call it. Yeah, it's just, it's clearly like a hand-drawn, well, I mean, not hand-drawn, it could be vectorized and traced or something, but it's like, uh, what's the way to put it? I think one of the things I really like about pixel art or low-res art or, um, you know, sort of emulator-style graphics is that they do more with it than the actual machine at the time could do. Like, well, I don't want to diz the artist of like 1982 or whatever, when this art style was probably sort of a bit more common, or, or the only art style. Um, but this is actually art. So I think they were, it was like, they made a game back then in this low-res style because they had to. But now people make games in this style because they want to. Um, and they've got like 30, 40 years of um, craft backing it up. So you, they just kind of can do these sort of nice little tricks. This looks a little bit more um, posturized, vectorized, I guess. Obviously, we've got better tools. You know, we didn't have the GIMP or Inkscape back then. Well, they didn't. <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion they're trying to kill me, but I'd run away. Uh, kill me. I'd run away, but there's a bomb in our spines. I knew it. I knew this future prison had. I, well, I said it was around the neck, but I, I'm going to take partial credit for saying it was in the spine. Classic, classic sci fi. If I was running a prison, the first thing I would do is implant bombs on all the prisoners. And maybe the prison guards as well. Um. I have a sneaking suspicion that try yes, I've said that. Once a week or so, someone gives up and saunters off. Ten minutes later, you hear them detonate. Pink chunks rain and cook in the firelight. It's a great mental image. Terrible, terrible. You know, as a, like, historian, uh, you know, I take an interest in all things history, and, and there's a branch of history called, like, military history, and it's popular by military historians. But I sometimes think like using their powers of being a historian for for not good, for evil, for not good, right? They're like sort of the the dark mages of the wizarding <laughs> historian community. Um, but I understand because the reason I say that is because I'm deeply attracted to it as well, you know, military history. Um, and I just learned a terrible term a few years ago. 
that I've just been reminded of. Pink misting. Pink chunks rain, and yeah. And you just kind of like, it's so conceptually pure and such an interesting concept, even though it's like horrific and just kind of like, you know, what a nightmare that's, that such a thing exists. But, you know, nightmares are interesting. Those are the real crazy ones, though. Usually we'll just throw a fit, hold up the line for an hour or two, lay down in the fire to give the legs a rest. But you have to get back up eventually. Not if you're bleeding out, you don't. I mean, we're allowed to talk about some darker things, because it's a dark, it's a very dark concept of a game. Oh no, we're falling. I hope we don't, no, we're fine. Most of the kids, most of the kids were a few years younger than her. She offered advice where she could, as if all her intellectualizing wasn't a crate of mind poison. Just trust in the program, alright? I wonder if this is an allegory for anything. Um... Yeah, hmm. As I said, as, as I said on many streams, it's like, I don't know how dark the themes are. I don't know how I'm going to respond to the dark themes. I mean, I could totally miss them and sort of show my ignorance, or I could read too much into them and show my ignorance some other way. Disgusting lapdog compliance. She didn't really understand it. How could she... How she could hate this heck more than anything and still act like a cop on her own time. Yes, halt. Um, oh, yes, well, you know. Um, there's a bit of a cab vibe to this, I think, as well. Ah, oh, we're over there. Okay. Oop, nope. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, oops, almost. Okay. Okay, great. Um, the kids loved it, though. No, not the inmates. I mean the guards. Those hecks have no idea what they signed up for. A bunch of stoner space nerds, just following orders, believing all the torment was created was for the greater good. And of course, that had an effect on us. You know, they often say the problem with Australia is not that we're descended from convicts. The problem is we're descended from prison guards. I think about that phrase a lot sometimes. Well, not a lot, but I do think about it sometimes. Mostly because it's quite witty. Um, the machinery caked blood over every sensation until it felt as natural as breathing. It's enforces bound in ink that always was and always will be. Yeah, okay. Mm, I mean, that's a very popular phrase in Australia. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. And I did mention earlier that we've got a bit of a problem with um, people dying in custody in Australia, often in cages, um, and there's an element of those people are almost always Aboriginal people. I'm wondering if this game is, like, maybe this is the allegory, or maybe I'm reading too much into it. Um, but I'm actually going to take a quick break, because we've done our half hour, but I actually do want to keep giving this another 10 minutes but I actually do need some water. So I'm going to 